Happy Vesak. Tonight is our second annual Vesak Poetry Slam, implying that since we've done it twice, there will probably be a third and fourth and beyond. So to get things rolling tonight, to help us celebrate the birth, awakening, and death of the Buddha. And let me mention once again that uh, in response to the poems, that bowing is certainly appropriate, but in this case, we're also allowing finger snapping. So here is our friend from the great white north, Brad. So I dragged out some slightly older pieces here and some new ones. So this goes back a few years. What a strange house this is. No floor, no roof. The walls have disappeared. Nothing but windows. Now that's not quite right either. There's no glass, no frames. Even with the eyes closed, there is seeing all around. Flesh spreads out like galaxies in space. Bones are clouds and vapor. Strange though it is, this house begins to feel like home. Weaving particles of mist on an ancient loom. The promise of the garments and convincing disguises continually vanish along with the empty fabric. A blazing sun splits the vault of heaven. Both loom and mist evaporate. Death? No, not at all. The heart blossoms open, naked, new, and sun-soaked. Next one we have in my little bunch of squares is Kevin Haysong Sheridan. Uh, this year I wrote three. Uh, I like to do just one at a time so that we can give everybody else a chance to uh, go as well. Uh, this one I call Tempest Fujit. In silence, we find the truth's embrace beneath the moon's soft glow. In stillness, mind's tumultuous race fades into the gentle flow. Petals fall, rivers flow, echoes of the past. In each moment, seeds we sow, eternity held, fleeting and vast. Mountains high, sky so wide, Yet boundless is the soul. In emptiness, all worlds reside. In unity, the fragments whole. Lotus blossoms in a muddy pond, pure amidst the mire. In every heart, enlightenment dawned. Beyond all words, all desire. Wind whispers through the bamboo grove, teaching lessons of the wise. In every breath, the truth we rove, in every heart, enlightenment lies. So the first one is the mirror. Looking in the mirror, seeing wrinkles in gray, showing the composition, missing the creation. The next is a short poem. I called math. Life is an exponent. Age is an integer. Wisdom is a sum. Birth and death, just part of the equation. And finally, this house. Rahula, Rahula. J'ai choisi cette maison. You are not my fetter. Neither ball and chain, nor shackle and lock. In this house, I see my true self. No self. That 
brings us to <laughs> Robert Coho Epstein. And I promise this time I will finger snap. Thank you. Um, I have uh, a few medium sized poems and then some short ones. I'd like to start for this round with a two part poem about my cat. Um, it's called Ollie Asleep Amidst the Plants. Part one. I didn't want to leave the cat alone, so I took him up to the bedroom with me and petted him for a while. After a while, he jumped over to the plants across the room and went to sleep in his own private forest amidst the house plants surrounded by green leaves in the land of earthen pots. Part two, part two, Ollie went back to sleep in my poem. He found his long lost mew, which could only sound in a dream. Faint echo of childhood, the echo of lost cats. This one is a fighter attacking leaves and chewing on chains. He is one in a lineage of a legacy of cats, understanding instinctively his role, whirling through the night, and when he settles down in the garden with leaves hanging around him like a girl's long hair, he collapses in the ecstasy of sleep, leaving behind the body after running it like a bullet, chasing cloth mice who never make a sound. All right. We're up to Reverend Hengdahl. So I, uh, I just have some short ones here. I, I think I'll do two this, uh, this round and, and we'll start, uh, with, with this one, which, uh, is specifically dedicated for today. I am supposed to write a poem. So here it is some scribbled words to share. And uh, this this one may make more sense when we publish our magazine and, and you see the picture uh, that inspired it. I was walking around a lake meditating with my mala. Round and round, counting beads, inchworm by inchworm. I want to do one by uh, Jinji Sunya, who cannot be with us tonight. And uh, you'll have to, <clears throat> excuse me, apologize because all the poems are over here on this monitor and you guys are over here. So if I fail to make eye contact every now and then, it's because I'm looking over there. I am a Zen monk because I'm drawn to a complete contemplative, meditative practice, calming the bullshit of the mind, living peacefully, comfortable with questions and ambiguity, focused on service, common sense and basic sanity, living in gratitude and curiosity, developing compassion and understanding in order to help see suffering and confusion with humor and skill. So thank you, Reverend Jinji. And okay, the first one is called Bulbs. Nasturtiums appear straight out of the garbage heap unexpected joy. Uh, there is another one called Still. The view of the clouds obscured by electronics. Birds are still singing. 
which is pretty much my day-to-day -day existence here with a window being hidden by monitors and I can hear the birds singing. So uh, how about up to uh, Brad once again? This is a more recent one. Some folks like the high seats, floating with angels and dragons, far beyond the trembling troubles of ordinary flesh and bone. Me, I'm still just an old grave digger at heart, burying the dead and bringing forth flowers. I love to be startled by the gems among the broken glass and street trash to blind dive into the ancient swamp where no light shines and emerge with something nice for both of us. I've never been any good at building and repairs, especially now with fading vision and shaky hands. Deconstruction and demolition seem to be more my gig, undermining the foundations of cathedrals, igniting crystallized conceptualizations, until they dissolve like snowflakes in a firestorm. I feel like we're playing Hollywood Squares. It's pretty cool. Um, this one's called In the Silence and the Stillness. In the Garden of Samsara, we wander free. Paths of karma unfold beneath the Bodhi tree. And the stillness of mind, enlightenment's key, awakening dawns in the present we see. Through cycles of birth, death, and rebirths flow, illusions dissolve, and the truth begins to show. In the dance of impermanence, we come to know, embracing each moment, letting wisdom grow. Like the river's gentle stream, we flow, towards the ocean of oneness in which we stow. In the silence of being, serenity we bestow. In the heart's deep silence, the dharma we sow. In the depth of night, the stars align, guiding seekers on the paths divine. In the unity of all, the sacred shrine. In the stillness within, the divine we enshrine. I'm surprised he's not with us, um, but Scott Watson did contribute some of his inimitable, inimitable works. Uh, the first one is called Underwear Town. A shabby area, this city's northeast outskirts, corrugated auto body shops, corrugated warehouse, a yard in which aluminum scaffolding is stacked, mahjong parlor shacks, pachinko. Once there was a truck haphazardly parked. Some drivers sometimes happily ignore stop signs. Weather-beaten uh, vending machines stand each corner's beat. A drab scene, dusty, discarded, very unpoetic. I go there midnight in my underwear for secret relaxation. It's a bird song that makes me happy. And you can't beat Scott. He's he's a good one. Um, Minwe, you said you're out of them, huh? You wanna you wanna improvise, throw down some rhymes, a little freestyle. Uh, I left my I left my M and M at the altar, so uh, uh, yeah, I'll I'll just pass to the next <laughs> to the next rapper. Okay, I, it looks like Dr. Dre's ready, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, do two medium length poems. They're medium enough to fit into one serving. Um, this first one is called The Passing of the Moon. 
The light that's left is bright but eerie after the passing of the daytime moon. It left its mark on our waking dream. The bright light, the dark light, the winnowing sun. During the passage, the day was dusking, dusted with darkening gray and dim. It seemed like a comet might be coming, but it was just the moon enjoying the stage. At times, the moon will pass in the night and the sun doesn't notice, the sun doesn't care. We sleep right through it, benign dreamers, and we don't notice that it's right there. The second one is called Petals in the Wind, a celebration of flower petals. Petals in the wind, a beautiful masquerade, seeing the air through a lovely mask, all mixed up like unfettered dancers, creating wild circling shapes in the sparkling sun. Petals in the wind, small pastel petals from the cherry trees, circling the bark in a brown and pink tango, going back and forth with the impulse of the breezes, jumping and gliding like skiers on a rough patch, yet everything beautiful and serene all around them. Turbulence that is as soft and pretty as a baby's pink dress. Petals in the wind. Okay, and that brings us up to Reverend Hangdahl. Okay, I'll throw two more out here. Up and down that hill, a hundred times, a hundred times a hundred, always the same, always different. A lamp, a beacon, so should we be. Do we see our light? Thank you for your poetry, Reverend. Uh, I must have mistakenly gathered a few of last week's moonbeams and unknowingly stuffed them into my pillowcase. In the blood rush of silence, its own ever-present sound, I attuned to the strains of Saturn's rings and distant galaxy arias, pervading the body, suffusing the dark. And when I'm in, uh, in a short one, tripping over the empty space between thought, a stutter of insight that cannot be repeated. Okay, I'd like to throw out uh, another one of Scott Watson's. Um, it's called return to underwear town what is it about these dilapidated surroundings grounded in decrepitude ever more deeply is freedom to be just as i am undressed for uh, but for these brief lines relax to blossom here in anywhere town to dandelion wherever I please. Because in a Vesak uh, celebration, you can never have too many poems about underwear. Uh, uh, my last one is called The Seeker Finds. Uh, upon the canvas of life, karma paints its hue. In each action, the seeds are strewn. Through the cycle of birth, death, and anew, in the boundless sky of being, we find our true view. In the garden of the mind, though its bloom and fade, yet in the stillness within, truth is laid. In the depths of meditation's shade, the seeker finds the path unswayed. Like the rivers flow, <clears throat> time drifts by, moments dance beneath and in the sky. 
and the essence of emptiness we spy, the interconnectedness that underlies. In the silence of the dawn, the world awakes. In the whispers of the wind, truth partakes. In the embrace of impermanence, the heart breaks. Yet in the depths of suffering, awakening takes. In the heart's sanctuary, wisdom's flame burns bright, guiding souls through the darkness of night. In the boundless expanse of insight, Seeker finds liberation, pure, and right. So, since he was so prolific and seems to have a theme, I'm going to throw out uh, another one from Scott Watson. It's called Naked as a Newborn. Naked as a poem would have me, no fear of pickpockets or meaning. Uh, so, uh, let me throw out one more of his. Yeah, it's called un un Untitled, Unentitled too, but Untitled. Shallow mind, deep thought, cherry blossom falling. I have one from Scott. Oh, do you? Uh-huh. Master Unsan, he yelled. I see you under there. Under where? That would bring us up to uh, our next contestant on the Hollywood Squares, Robert Coho Epstein. I have some, uh, a whole bunch of uh, very short poems now, very, very, very short, so I'm gonna do four of them in a row. Very short. The first one is called Sunset, and it's one line. Is there a difference between God and a sunset? The second one is called Thought. The thin veneer of thought occasionally drops away, and there it is. The third one, everyone is strong enough to walk the path for a while. It always takes us back to where we're standing. And finally, Lifetime. What a lifetime, so much universe in every step, so much seen, so much unseen. Uh, so I am going to uh, throw it over to uh, Reverend Hangdahl if he has any more. Yeah, so I'll offer another one here. Um, actually, just just kind of threw this together a little bit ago, and it's really um, because it's Vesak and, and what that means, and I have a, a number of people in my life struggling that have been struggling, and so these, these kind of thoughts swirl around as I contemplate Buddha contemplating suffering, so... Uh, not sure I'm, I'm happy with this one, but here, here's where we got to between work and now. How do we help those we cannot help? Do they hear us hearing their cries? A dedication, a ringing bell, echoing in the stillness of chaos. Very Guan Yin of you. So this one goes back a number of years. It's roughly entitled A Complaint from Retreat. It seems I'm running out of faces to wear, and the letters of any name I choose keep falling into the void. 
and my skin's not much good either. Sure, most night it keeps out small rodents and glaciers, but galaxies and transport trucks pass right through. And another thing, the soles of my feet keep leaking my identity into the great earth, and I find myself blossoming all over the damn place. Spoken as only a ca Canadian would think to about the glaciers. <laughs> well, then how about we see what Robert Coho Epstein has for us? Thank you, my son. This is another group of uh, little poems. I, if I do a few of them, I might finish up my current uh, crop. Let's see. Let's see how that goes. Uh, this is called Flowers. We have a few flower ones here tonight. You don't have to become the flowers all at once. You can start off by just noticing that they're saying hello to you. And the next one, which kind of goes along with it, is called Hello Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello everybody so many flowers hi bright bright red hi little greenies have a nice day in sunlight the next one is called murky I could see that you couldn't see I can't see very well myself feeling my way through the fog with nothing behind it. Murky within as well, and nowhere really to go. So we keep going. One more little one called my hand. I'm looking at my hand. My hand is an object. My hand is aging. Am I aging? Who am I? Yeah, I'll, I'll toss out one more here. Um, this isn't really a new one. This is a rework of one from a long time ago, maybe right around when we met. Kind of, kind of redoing it uh, in honor of uh, a little over a week from now. And we have confused Nipponery for Satori. This transmission is a flowered kimono. Peel back the gold from the altar Buddha. There is nothing within. What does it mean to don a robe? Well, this is a real moldy oldie sent to me from a friend at the Toronto Zen Center from 30 years ago. <laughs> um, the generals have fallen on their swords. The soldiers have all deserted. The farmers have scorched the earth and the peasants have destroyed all architecture with no one left to rule over, no troops to command and no enemy in sight with no ancestors before and no descendants to follow in this kingdom of growing emptiness. It's no wonder this old tyrant wants to retire. Uh, let's see who might have more. Robert, you're always good for a few more. You know, my, my daughter popped in and contributed what appears to me to be a very buddhist poem. And uh, she, she read one last year, which didn't uh, get uploaded. I'm going to upload it this time. But I've got a new one, so she's apparently either too shy or too tired to make an appearance, even though she's right over there. But um, <laughs> I'm going to... <laughs> Hello. I'm going to uh, read for her. I mean, I guess okay, she, but, she's going to read it. Come on in. <laughs> there it is. It's right here. Hey, hey Emily. Hi, nice to see you. Sorry, I'm coming in. No, I'll, hold, I'll hold you up. Okay. <laughs> or you can to, sit here. Yeah. <laughs> or sit here on the edge. Okay, there you go. Um, okay. Languid imposture. Stretching outside of the boundaries, fitted squarely upon me. 
moving through waves of joy and pain to get to the final level, surpassing expectations, breaking in the process, discarded pieces of self, like clothing scattered and drawers unnamed, namelessly wandering through the game. Thank you for your poetry. Well, and then, then bye bye. <laughs> and this is called That's Life. We all make judgments every day, big or small. To do so, we need values. If we trace our values, find what they link back to, we might be surprised to find the life itself which has no values at all. Supposedly, we value life. Why all the destruction? Hurt by existence, do nothing, it'll go away. It's called Keats. Poetry is dead, who cares? Poetry is alive, who cares? Who cares is true, and there's beauty in that. Uh, yeah, Emily is making a return appearance on, on my chair. There was, one, there was one more that I found from 2015 that I kind of wanted to share. <laughs> um, okay, this one was called Golden Dust. The sun opens its eyes, dusty golden light streaming in through the filter of the sky. Pieces of it race in tear-shaped droplets to the ground. The movement is a sight to see, but the action makes no sound. The birds with wings of silver sift their bodies through the trees, poured over like ice and ground up like coffee. Stray feathers falling from the glass as the only visible trace. Dark birds that wander, the only birds without a face. They swirl through the sky, clapping with the rain. They slow when they see their shadows, gracefully dancing through the pain. The true birds are sleek, strong with a quiet gaze. Their eyes glimmering with laughter, love, healing, peace, and <laughs> praise. I don't really like that last word, but <laughs> I might change it later. <laughs> I don't know if I should read this, but I will. I won't say who it's about. Um, I'm not going to mention the number as it might identify them. So I'm going to say um, it's called Happy Birthday. Beautiful and happy older birthday. It's both just a number that you've reached and also very special. This life, these years. You're, you're trying to make me dig through the memory banks while I'm sitting on a park bench with a cell phone in my hand, man. That's, that's a challenge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're all about challenges. We're all about challenges. Then I will, uh, I will share one of my fathers that he emailed me today. How's that? Vesak, questions during full moon in May. Whence does self arise? Why am I here and whence all the others? Why is being so often other? When we depart, where are we found? What is the light and what is the dark? What is peace and how is it known? How can we be non-dual? Brad, back to you. Got a couple of uh, couple of three liners here. This ancient moonlight illuminates five mountains, six streams flow brightly. That's one. Winter rise and fall. A heart 
in golden sorrow, snow light radiant through. Some of the, one of them is one I have freestanding, but I have ones from one of her uh, little books that, that she's published. Oh. That's okay. These are really nice short ones, beautiful. The Sutra about flowers, taking vows to become fireflies. Bowing empties your mind to the ground, says master. And uh, make a ritual out of a molehill of nothingness. In a world where everything is mined, cherry blossoms. Uh, this is Melinda again. Thus have I heard butterflies with yellow socks. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I hope I won't get in trouble here. Um, this this is one of hers. This is actually a, a short story kind of thing she wrote uh, that she just shared with me after her trip and retreat. So um, if I wasn't supposed to share this, she can yell at you. And I'll see if I can move the little window of the Zoom call around and read this without completely losing control. It's called the cloud tree. On the way to a mountain was a huge tree that bloomed in the spring. It gave flowers of the softest white with a touch of pink at their ends. What was unusual was the tree could bloom only in one branch every season. And it came to be known as the paralyzed tree. It tried very hard to get flowers in its other places. Sometimes the tree would shed all its leaves, thinking the flowers would come at last, but it could only give flowers to that one branch. The villagers passing by would shake their heads at this, and even the birds would chirp about its eccentricity with each other. One day, an old monk with a staff was passing by and stopped to rest under its shade. The tree watched as he sat down and leaned against his trunk and trunk. After drinking some water from his bottle, the monk saw the branch full of flowers. Smiling gently at the blossoms, he took out his mala and started to pray. Calling the names of the Buddhas, the monk started to fill the sky with millions and millions of replicas of the branch bursting with flowers. Folding his hands into a lotus, he then offered them to the holy ones until his eyes glistened with unshed tears. Next spring, the monk started his journey towards the mountain. It was a holy mountain that no one knew of. He was getting old and he took the usual footpath that the villagers took. There was a shortcut through the forest that he used to travel, but since he was getting old, he decided to take the road that he took last season, which was an easy climb. On his way, he had heard of a cloud tree that the villagers were talking about and he planned to take rest under it and to have his small lunch that a family had offered him on his way. At the foot of the mountain, he saw it. Its top arose like a cloud trapped between the clusters of treetops, as if it had forgotten to float back into the sky. Once close, he immediately recognized the flowers, the same flowers that managed to quench his fatigue last time. The tree arose proudly and not a single leaf was there, Spilling with flowers, he caught the sweet fragrance pervading even from a distance. An equal number of flowers were also on the earth, and there were two men who had come to collect wood, resting on the soft bed. They looked as if they were drunk with flowers, and the monk looked on in amazement at the tree that had moved him so much to offer it to the Buddhas in all directions. Up close, it looked magnificent, and a soft wind blew against his face as if in greeting bending down to pick up some fresh flowers from both of his hands that fell at his feet, he uttered a prayer and closed his eyes. And thank you to Melinda for that teaching.
let us meet at the confluence of the flowing bridge and the unmoving stream. This one apparently was a poem that Emily and I wrote together. Uh, so there are some lines that are hers and some lines that are mine, and we took turns uh, weaving it. Pouring energy, a vein into the earth, from the central channel of the self, all the way back to the maternal source. Light falls on eyes sunken. The light has drained down to the feet. Covering in an eternal wind, the energy cloud gyrates like a spinning top, flitting between moments like flowers. We are honeybees with seemingly unconnected gestures, yet I hear my pain coming from your mouth as the mirror tells me its story. Very nice. Um. Okay, Ode to Scott. Through the Loom, Haynes, BVDs, Commando, not wood, not bad. Um, I have another one of Melinthas that's a good one to either end on or just read. Okay. Another beautiful short one. Uh, and it goes along well with the theme of some of the folks in this lineage. Um, attaining rain, I weep on every sentient being. Uh, we can close tonight uh, with the great Bodhisattva vows. Sentient beings are numberless, we vow to help them all. Delusions are countless, we vow to see through them all. Opportunities to awaken are infinite, we vow to embrace them all. The Buddha way is endless, we vow to embody it. Uh, again, thank you for coming, thank you for participating, and thank you for helping to honor the birth, awakening, and death of the Buddha.